Hey, Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and in this edition of Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy, we're talking about how to use chat GPT like a CFO and a CMO. Now, these are two very different things. CFO, Chief Financial Officer, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer. And I'll explain why I wanted to cover these two areas specifically. But first, there's been a lot of talk in our industry, the accounting industry, about chat GPT and its role in our profession. Uh, when it first came out at the end of last year, I kind of pounced on it because I saw the writing on the wall or my screen. Um, and I said, this is this is not going away. This is clearly like an explosion of technology that is only going to catch fire. And sure enough, it has. Initially, I was submitting articles and, you know, told, ah, I don't see how this is relevant for accounting. And now people are dying for content on chat GPT. Case in point, look at my screen here real quick. The video I did, I haven't done a lot, but I did one video here on how to create your own AI-based accounting system with chat GPT uh, in January, and it's got 15,000 views. I did this podcast episode on it, and it kind of flopped, probably because the title is terrible, uh, is at the beginning of the end. But the thing about that title, is at the beginning of the end, is the following. Um, you know, a lot of my colleagues in the accounting world have mixed feelings. Of course, there are those like me who jumped on and said, oh my God, this is amazing. We have to keep playing with this and learning it and figuring out how to use it. It's a tool. Then there are others who are panicking and saying, oh my God, didn't you see the Terminator? The world's going to come to an end. The machines are going to take over and this is terrible, right? And the reality is this is just the new version of a lot of technology explosions we've seen in the past, Okay. <clears throat> originally we went from ledger paper, that green ledger paper, to computers and people panicked and said, oh my God, how are we going to do accounting like that? And the reality is now you would mock somebody if they ever suggested doing accounting on paper, right? This is the next iteration of that. It's, you know, the, the in between it was going to the cloud, for example. Everybody's like, oh, it's not secure. You can't put your stuff in the cloud. And now it's like crazy if you don't. So bottom line, <clears throat> this is here to stay whether you like it or not. And like any tool, it can be used for good, and it can be used for evil. And as long as there's a way to make money using it in some way, people are going to use it. And then people are going to figure out how to make money using it to stop people who are using it for evil. So the bottom line is, this is going to be here. It's here to stay. My suggestion to you is start learning how to use it. Start playing with it daily. And in today's video, I want to talk about two high-level use cases, how to use chat GPT like a CFO, and how to use it like a CMO. Now, why these two topics particular and why together? Well, because I felt like I had enough room to do them two together, working backwards on that. And also because most of the content that I've seen around using chat GPT has been centered around writing, which granted, it's an amazing writer. That's one of the reasons it's so scary is it can write content. You can ask it to write a book and it you would never know that it was like an AI bot writing this stuff. So writing is the obvious use case and a lot of people have shared and talked about getting it to write email correspondence and all other kinds of things, especially one of the top use cases under the heading of writing that I've seen it for is where you have to write something that's sort of sensitive in nature, an uncomfortable email that you have to send to a client because you're not happy. ChatGPT is amazing at, you know, figuring out how to write that professionally and without any emotion so that you can get the point across with the least possible chances of, you know, getting into like a toxic exchange with a client. So <clears throat> lots of great use cases. I felt like there wasn't as much covering these two areas. There's definitely some, as you saw on my screen, uh, stuff on how to create, you know, how to use it to do accounting stuff. It's not there yet. It makes mistakes. You'll have to correct it. But I still say play with it because as it evolves and gets better, you'll want to be ahead of the curve on that rather than playing catch up. Okay. <clears throat> so how to use chat GPT. Let's start with the CFO use case. Okay. I have got a transcript here that's based specifically on the prompt that you see at the top of my screen now where it says you are the CFO of my company and and here's what I suggest you do especially if you haven't played with this at all yet rather than going right into the specific use case how about this how about asking it the very question I'm showing you in my prompt what kinds of things should I ask for your help with ask chat GPT for help on how to use chat GPT no one is better positioned to give you an answer to that question right and as you can see I got a pretty good answer right it, it lists six different areas that it can help with right and so I said okay 
you know, I want to prepare a forecast then. Let's go right to the CFO. This is what a CFO does. They lay out the yardsticks. They create forecasts. So now I ask it, how do I do that, right? Because it's not obvious. I can only type in here. It's not like I can upload a spreadsheet and say, here's the historical financials. Go run with it, right? So I said, how do I, you know, I want to prepare a forecast for the rest of this year. How do I go about giving you the information you need? What I need to prompt you with each account and what year to date financial information looks like from both P&L and balance sheet. So it says to prepare a forecast for the rest of the year, it's helpful to provide me with as much information as possible about the company's financial situation, including historical financial statements, budgets, and any relevant market or industry data. Now I learned more recently than this, than when I did this, uh, when I had this uh, conversation, <clears throat> you can actually take a, a, a P&L and like highlight it from QuickBooks Online and copy and paste that into here. And it might look all jumbled up when you paste it in, but ChatGPT can read it just fine. We actually tested that in 97 and up recently, and it worked perfectly. Um, so I have an even more efficient way to do what I'm about to show you than what I was doing on this particular day, right? And then it gives me the specifics revenue and sales projections. So it wants me to provide the projections or at least, you know, like some assumptions and things and so on. Uh, expense projections, okay, the capital expenditures, cash flow. <clears throat> Basically what it's telling me is give me as much information as you can and that way I'll get a better result for you. So I just made up some numbers using my business model as the intended like type of business. And I said, all right, let's uh, look at a breakdown in uh, the accounting and bookkeeping services as well as training. So I said income, you know, I listed the three months. I listed some theoretical and monthly revenue amounts. And I said, you know, cost of goods sold is about 2000 a month. Most of that is credit card processing fees, expenses, payrolls about thirty k a month, which includes 10000 in officer salaries. That's expected to continue. Computer and internet. I just went down the line and I gave it, as you can see, a lot, very detailed prompt here. With all the information, I'm not aware of what, if any, limit there is in terms of how long of a prompt you can write. So you can provide it with lots of information. I said, told it about the EIDL loan, and I even gave it some market conditions to consider. I wanted to see how it would handle that. Uh, at the time I was doing that was when we just learned about the implosion of Silicon Valley Bank. So I, I wrote relevant information about that and how that might impact things. Uh, the war between Ukraine and Russia, right? So I'm giving it the facts of what's going on in the world. Remember. Um, up until this point, ChatGPT could only see information as recent as 2021. I read this week that they've now opened it up and it can actually access data on the Internet so that it can source more current information. But either way, giving it all the information it needs that might impact these projections. So I, and finally, I said, using the information above, please prepare a monthly forecast for April through December in table format. It's very important when you're prompting it to present you with financial data to ask for it in table format. Otherwise, you're going to get probably a jumbled mess of numbers only to have to ask it to reproduce that in table format. Okay. So it says, based on the information provided, I prepared a monthly forecast. And I didn't like the way it did it. And, you know, it kind of transposed things compared to the way I would want it done. So um, I came back, I come back to that later, right? For now I can see, okay. And it's a little bit cut off. I have to kind of click on the screen and drag to the right to see all the rest of it. And then I prompted it and said, can you prepare a loan schedule, a loan payment schedule for the EIDL loan showing principal and interest? And it says, sure, based on, and remember, I provided it all the information about that above. So that's the beauty of having uh, you know, a follow-up like this in the same chat transcript is I can reference or I, I can assume that chat GPT can reference information that has been, you know, laid out previously. So it says, based on the information you provided, the EIDL loan balance beginning of the year was 117K, interest rate of 3.5%, 30-year term started May 1, 2020, monthly payment is 595 and the company makes payments each month to pay off the loan a little faster. Uh, here's the loan payment schedule. So it comes up with it. It says, all right, beginning balance is this. Here's the breakdown. Uh, and so on until the loan is fully repaid. This payment schedule assumes that the interest rate and payment amount remain constant over the life of the loan. Then I said, okay, can you prepare the forecast from above? But this time, go back to January using the information I gave you so we have the full year. Indicate the historical months versus forecasted. And please transpose the table so we have the months as column and the categories in rows. Please also include a total column for the row so I can see the projected annual total. And it says, certainly, based on the information provided, uh, include a forecast for the full year of 2021. I'm not sure if that's what I told it the year was. Uh, maybe I did. But, and once again, it's cut off, so I have to click and drag to the right to see the rest of it. For some reason, we didn't get a total for, um, a, a grand total for, uh, you know, everything uh, for web development, actually, that is, right? That's what's on the last row. 
So I told it that. I said, hey, that doesn't look complete. Can you rerun it, including everything all the way to net income at the in the bottom row? And can you give a total for the expenses? So here we go. Apologize for the mistake. I love it. And that's, a, that's kind of one thing I want to underscore is you want to talk to chat GPT the same way you would talk to a person. So if you asked a, per per a person to prepare this information and got that result, then you just ask them to correct it in the ways that you want, right? You, again, it's just like talking to a human being, but you're talking to a bot. Okay, so it apologizes for the mistake. Still, you know, gets a little, you know, stuck here, right? I get to the total expenses to the bottom row, June. And so again, I said, it looks like you stopped at June's net income. Can you factor in, uh, can you factor in some of the market conditions I gave you and how those might impact revenue? Also, uh, can we assume some fluctuations in the amounts? One thing we can factor in since our courses mainly appeal to accounting professionals is that January through April are slower. Things usually pick up from May through June. Then the summer months are a little slower, and we pick up again around September, assume an additional spike in revenues for the holidays, end of November through December. Again, it apologizes for the mistake on the previous table. It says it's updated based on uh, assuming fluctuations in the revenue. The new table includes both historical and projected amounts and a total column. Okay. And again, I didn't get everything. And this is what I mean about it's not perfect, especially getting financial data out of it. So I wouldn't go counting on this yet or planning on doing forecasts using chat GPT. But I do want you to play with this and start seeing how to get results and what kind of results you can get and how you can, you know, you just learn how to prompt it better to get better results. That's kind of the bottom line. So. Over here, I just kind of repeated what it seemed to have ignored. I said, also, can we assume some fluctuations in the amounts? One thing we can factor in since our courses. So I kind of just took that, copied and pasted from the prior prompt. It says, and it even acknowledges, it says, my apologies for missing that in my previous response. I have now updated the table to include fluctuations in revenue as you requested. So what the funny thing is it fluctuated the historical months too, which I didn't actually want it to do. Um, but you can see how, again, scrolling out, I can, you know, I'm getting better. I'm, I've, I've got a net income line. Uh, again, it cuts off in April. Okay. Uh, and then I said in a previous response, when I, which I asked you to generate, you had offered that you would assume a 5% decrease based on the slower months and a 10% increase during the holidays. I'd like to see that version again. It says, I apologize for the confusion. Here's the table based on the assumptions I mentioned earlier. And so here... Again, we're getting a little better, right? So we're getting the fluctuations in income, cost of goods sold. I told it was a constant at 2,000, right? Which is processing fees. Now, I'm sure I could have, I could tell it, hey, let's assume that cost of goods sold is going to be three and a half percent of revenue, right? If we're paying three and a half percent, then all the revenues are collected via credit card. I could probably tell it that. So here we are at the end. Let's try that. So let's assume that Cogs is all. Payment processing fees based on, let's say, 2.5% because at that volume it probably would be something more like that, even if you're using Stripe or PayPal or something, of total revenue. Please regenerate this table with that assumption in place okay and it even appended the title there with uh, payment fees and we can test the math I'm assuming it wouldn't screw that up but let's just see if the total's right then everything else is supposed to be right so here's a little, little side tip you want scrap paper for calculations sheets.new Okay, let's take uh, the total, and 2.5% of that should be the 34,369. 0.025, that times that, oops, that times that. 34,601, survey says 34,369. Did I get something off? And 384050. All right, so we've got some kind of a difference, maybe some kind of a rounding difference. It's in the ballpark, right? And always, if you're asking ChatGPT to produce numbers, you know, check the math. Let's spot check another month. Let's take April, right? So April was 58,900. 
1473 is the result. That one's spot on. So we may have ended up with some rounding that accumulated into the total and made us off by a few hundred bucks, right? So still, that's pretty good. It's pretty good that you can, you know, make those kind of updates. And now you've seen in terms of, you know, you've seen really one use case in terms of using chat GPT like a CFO in terms of how you can start learning how to play with chat GPT and get it to produce the kind of data a CFO would want to get. Uh, like I said, you can, uh, and I learned this more recently, you can dump a PNL into a chat GPT prompt and say, you know, and, and say, here's the PNL. I haven't played with getting a PNL total by month and dropping that in. So you might just say, here's a year to date PNL for January through whatever, um, and give it the assumptions and then say, please generate a forecasted profit and loss for me for, you know, X, Y, and Z. And of course, you can probably do the same with the balance sheet. Okay, so that's how I want you to start playing with using chat GPT like a CFO. Now let's turn it over to the CMO example, the chief marketing officer. Now why am I bringing this up? Because most accounts that I know are doing their own marketing. Now it's almost ironic because we make fun of our clients who come in our door having tried to do bookkeeping themselves. Uh, and we make fun of them because they think it's going to be easy enough to do it themselves. And then they realize the mess they've made and they hire us to clean it up. But we're doing a version of that by trying to do our own marketing, right? And I get it. And the same reason our business owner clients often try to do their own bookkeeping at first is because they don't have the money to pay somebody or they don't think they do, right? Same thing here. So we want to do our own marketing until we grow and get big enough that we can afford to hire our own marketing person. So I start off a new transcript. Uh, ChatGPT actually named this for me, the DIY marketing plan. And I told it the same thing I would tell a human being if they were sitting in my office and I was bringing them in to help me with this stuff. I said, you are my chief marketing officer. I need to develop a marketing plan for my accounting and bookkeeping firm. I have little or no budget for this, so it comes down to what I can do myself without hiring anyone and keeping in mind that I have to stay on top of the actual work I'm paid to do. How can I get started? And here's what ChatGPT gave me. It gave me a list of things. And in the write-up, I've given you this exact list. And I want you to take this from my article here and copy and paste it into a fresh Google Doc. To open up a new tab, right? You're going to type docs.new. So you have a blank, uh, a blank document. And copy and paste this right into that document so you can actually start working off of this. Okay, but then I also want you to open up chat GPT yourself and start it off with this prompt because I want you to have a chat transcript that's got the history of the prompts and the responses that you get. And you may get a slightly different response, by the way. So look at that and see what the differences are and see what you like better. But the bottom line is, as I've pointed out, these transcripts are iterative, right? And you so you can build on them. So I think one mistake people are probably making, I don't know this for sure, is they're creating a new chat for every question they have. That's a bad idea because each of these chats stands on its own. You can't reference information from other chats. I actually asked ChatGPT that exact question once. So you're better off creating a, a, a transcript that builds and builds and builds. So as time goes on and you're talking about marketing for your company, you have this one transcript where ChatGPT has learned a ton about your company and marketing and you can even go back and tell it what things you've done that worked and didn't work and so on so that it can learn more and more about your business and how it operates and how it can help you with the marketing. So you're going to take this and you're going to copy and paste it. It talks about all the different kinds of things you can do, but I'm going to start with the first one. Okay, so you're going to copy and paste this into a document. Then you're going to, sec uh, you're going to write the same follow-up prompt that I did by copying this first item and pasting it in, and here's what I did. I said regarding, and I pasted it in. I said, can you help me do this? Give me some questions to answer that will help me develop a very detailed analysis of the following. We provide accounting and bookkeeping services for e-commerce clients. Now, I picked a niche, right? Obviously, you'll want to replace this. And even if you serve two or more niches, do it separately for each one. You want, just like a person, you'll, uh, ChatGPT is going to give you a better response when you're very focused, right? So focus on one particular niche. You can always go back and do another one afterwards, okay? And it gave me a great list of questions, which again are in the document, in the write-up, uh, which I want you to copy and paste so that you can start getting to work on improving the marketing for your own practice, okay? Now, the next thing I want you to do before, once you copied and pasted this all out and you're ready to get started, is the following. Now, it's going to sound like I'm being funny, but I'm very serious here. I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to open up your calendar. 
and I want you to find a time during the week that you can block off every week at the same time during the same hours. Ideally, minimum two hours up to four hours. I want you to put a block somewhere on your calendar. And I want you to put in the title of that calendar appointment, uh, marketing, you know, company marketing, something like that. And then in brackets, in square brackets, I want you to put non-negotiable and use a unique color or something for it and set that up as a recurring appointment every week at that time. Because what you're going to want to do, and you're going to see if you can't tell already from what you've seen on my screen, there's, it's going to take some time to go through and build this. But I can tell you from my own experience with a consultant that I've hired and paid good money for that this is the same kind of information that he has taught me to work on. And you're going to go through this. Uh, and that, that's just the first exercise based on the first original bullet point that ChatGPT gave me. But if you take the time, if you copy and paste these questions into a Google Doc or whatever you prefer to use, and you spend the time and spend that first two to four hour block of time answering these questions in detail, not rushed, not like, oh my God, I got to get this done so I can get back to my client's work. No, that's why you block out a good chunk of time so there's no pressure and you can take a deep breath, get a cup of coffee and sit down and relax and enjoy the process. Write this stuff out. Think about who you'd love to work with as you answer these questions. You're going to find two things happen. First, the obvious, you're going to have a very, very clear profile on who your perfect client is. And it's not just e-commerce clients. It's You'll see it's a lot more going into their mindset and you know the problems they're encountering and so on and so forth. Right. The other thing is having written this out in great detail, it will it, it sort of has a way of writing that language into your brain. And that informs how you speak to people when you speak to them. This will shape how your messaging works. It will make you better at communicating to your target audience when you're talking with them exactly who they are and, you know, why they want to work with you, why you can help them and so on. So I re I'm serious. I want you to stop this video now and do that exercise to start with. Open up your calendar and find the time to block out to work on marketing. If you, if you don't want to spend the money and you don't have t time to go create the content, you're going to reserve this time and you're going to do this and you're going to follow this process. I just showed you how to get started with it in chat GPT. Again, I want you to recreate these prompts. You'll probably get slightly different answers, but it should be roughly the same. But this way you have the same iterative opportunity to build and build and build on it. And each week when you are working on this, I want you in this chat transcript of yours, asking it more questions, getting more clarity. Okay. And you know, and then eventually going back, and, and this is just the first one, then you're going to ask it for help with this. Okay, I have to establish my unique value proposition, determine what sets my accounting and bookkeeping firm apart from competitors. You can start a prompt like this, and I'll do this right here. Um, so it tells me to do this. Okay, and again, it's like having an actual assistant. So I'm going to copy and paste that in. I'm going to say regarding this. Okay, shift enter to advance lines in the prompt. Um, I don't know where to start. Can you please help me maybe by asking me some questions I can answer and then you can help me better explain this to prospects. Enter. Boom. So you ask it for help with what to do, and then you ask it for help with each of these components, and it just builds and builds. And, and write your answers out on a separate document so it's easy to reference, because remember, this is going to get long over time. But then go back in here, and especially for something like this, you've told it you're going to answer these questions so that it can help you, right? So again, so here's another exercise that you can do maybe on week two and go through this. If you take the time to go through this, I can pretty much guarantee you that you will have, uh, you'll be amazed at the progress that you've made in a very short time just by going through these kinds of exercises. And it is going to have you kind of circle back eventually to producing content for social media and so on. But guess what? By the time you get to that, you're already going to be in the habit of having four hours every week set aside just for this stuff. 
which means it should be nothing to shift into that and say, okay, well, now now I know what to do. Let me get busy doing it. I'm going to open up a new Google Doc by typing docs.new, and I'm going to start writing a blog post. And then guess what? You can ask ChatGPT. I don't recommend having ChatGPT write it for you. I will never recommend doing that. There are a lot of people out there who are telling you to do it. I think it's going to work against you uh, on a number of levels if you do that. But what you certainly can do is you can write the article, come up with your core keyword, your key phrase that you wanted to rank for. Think about what might somebody type into Google when searching that your article should come up for. And you can tell ChatGPT, hey, here's my uh, keyword that I'm trying to optimize for. And then paste in the blog post that you've written. Can you edit this and optimize it for me based on this keyword? That you can do all day long with ChatGPT. And that works beautifully this way because you're not an SEO expert. But you are an expert at your own subject matter. And you have your own heart and soul to put into it. So that's why the core content should come from you. Then let ChatGPT become your SEO expert. So the bottom line is you want to go through the list of exercises essentially that ChatGPT has given you. Then build out your marketing plan based on that. And then as I was saying... Write your own blog post. Let your heart and soul drive the content itself. 350 to 600 words is all you need at a minimum. If you get to be like me and you start to fall in love with the process, you'll write longer stuff, right? But bottom line is write the stuff yourself. Put it into chat GPT. Ask it to optimize for you. And anything marketing related, the written content itself, the marketing plan, and the SEO, let it go into the same transcript because the more blog posts that you feed – in the same tra chat transcript, the more chat GPT in this transcript knows about what kind of content you're writing about, the better it's going to be able to help you because you're constantly feeding it more context, right? I even went in not long ago and I, I went through my YouTube channel, the videos that I've uploaded over the past like six to 12 months, and I identified the titles of the ones that perform the best and just in terms of the greatest number of views. And I went into a prompt in ChatGPT and I said, here are my top performing titles in YouTube. Based on these, can you generate 10 more ideas for me for things I should do videos on? And I instantly spit them out. And I said, these are great. Can you give me 10 more? And it instantly spit out 10 more. I eliminated ones that were just subjects I wasn't interested in doing. And, I, and after that, I had a nice long list of ideas for content to produce. So even to get ideas, you can feed it information that you have and let it help you come up with those ideas. And again, the idea is if these are doing well, what are other similar um, topics that are likely to also do well based on that. ChatGPT is going to be better at figuring that out than I am for sure because I'm not a search engine ex expert. So that, my friends, is your two cents or ten cents worth on how to use ChatGPT like a CFO and a CMO. If you have any questions, I'm not hard to find. Find me. I'm always happy to answer them, and I look forward to getting the opportunity to help you any way I can. As always, I hope you learned something here, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you in the galaxy. And that can be done in the same transcript as marketing because SEO is just a branch out of marketing. It all ties in. Thank you, Artemis. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, that's a lot, Artemis. So, so you're an SEO expert? You, you are. You know all about the SEO. Right? And the CMO. Yeah. All right. One each, and then I got to finish my video.